project video time. This is a joule meter. Uh, obviously you can see it's pretty handcrafted. Uh, what it does is measure uh, energy consumption of an electronic circuit and uh, that's important to me because I'm working on something where I need to know exactly how much energy the circuit takes and uh, things like how you code the software can significantly affect the product that I'm working on in terms of the energy consumption. Um, now, the word joule meter doesn't really show up in literature too much. Um, it uh, goes by a different name here, I'll explain in a second. But anyways, I have this little thing here, it's measuring volts and amps, and then it tells you the number of joules uh, consumed. You can see right now there's uh, 0.4 volts on two of the terminals, and there's no current. I'll just uh, turn on the uh, current through the circuit so it'll actually start uh, counting upwards. And then when I turn off the uh, current, you can see then uh, the number of joules stops because the circuit's no longer consuming uh, uh, power. Now, uh, a joule meter, of course, goes under a different name, so a watt-hour meter, but uh, that's a much cruder instrument. Um, if you dive into your basic physics, um, a watt is a joule per second by definition, uh, so a, a watt-second uh, is one joule. Uh, then a kilowatt-hour meter, for example, used in like houses, um, like this one pictured here, of course, uh, have a, a resolution a, a thousand times uh, worse than this little meter here. Um, it's actually a really interesting kind of uh, combination of some circuit design and a little bit of firmware. Um, based upon a Arduino Uno, it seems to be a go-to instrument for writing a couple hundred lines of code. Um, it actually was a surprisingly decent choice uh, for this uh, little project. So, uh, this video is basically all about uh, building a jewel meter and uh, looking at some of the uh, design decisions I needed to make uh, to get this to work. If you're going to measure energy consumption electrically, you need to measure two things. You need to measure current and you need to measure the voltage. Uh, for current, uh, what I have here is there are two terminals on the uh, measurement uh, instrument, a very small resistance. So basically, this is the one that would go serially inside the loop of the circuit. Uh, point, uh, 0.17 ohms is the resistance. You're trying to, of course, affect the circuit as little as possible. So as current flows through this, of course, it creates a voltage, but it'll be a very small voltage. Uh, the instrument I designed uh, works up to only about one amp. So you only create um, millivolts worth of voltage. And of course, you need to amplify it. Uh, the go-to component, of course, is the instrumentation amplifier, the INA121 here. This is a, uh, it was a Burr Brown part. It's now a, a part of uh, Texas Instruments, but uh, a very stable and very uh, well um, understood part. It's been around for a long time. Uh, it seemed like a decent choice. Uh, it requires, of course, classic uh, plus 12 minus 12. Um, now you can see here, if I reverse these terminals, I'll drive a negative voltage at the uh, ends of this uh, op amp, uh, which of course would be a disaster because it would destroy the uh, Arduino. So uh, this definitely was a proof of concept circuitry. There's a little bit of more protection here that would be uh, desirable, but uh, the concept's very simple. Uh, there's a resistor here which sets the gain. I set it to about uh, 47. And as the current flows through here, it creates a voltage and uh, not too much magic there. Uh, I have an uh, organic LED display to uh, just show the results. I don't have to hook a computer that way. That's kind of handy. A little uh, a DC DC converter, 5 volts in, plus or minus uh, 12 volts out. And, and then, of course, uh, just one of the analog inputs has to run into the uh, Arduino uh, to measure the voltage. And there's a very small little resistor here. Uh, well, it's a very high value resistor just to hold this at zero volts if the circuit's disconnected. So, uh, conceptually, uh, quite a straight circuit. Uh, some interesting construction details, though. Uh, I needed a very low value resistor, and uh, I didn't have anything at the time. So, um, I did have a big spool, though, of uh, wire here that's used uh, normally for a hot wire cutting. It uh, has a nickel chromium. Uh, it has a sort of a fairly high resistance per unit length. And uh, what I did was... Uh, cut a piece of that off and uh, then I uh, soldered onto it uh, two ends and uh, then I dipped it, uh, I had something called Plasti Dip, I think Shrink Wrap would also work, but I just had to isolate it. And this basically forms the, uh, the, the small resistance. It doesn't have to be too precise because what happens is you can solve all of your precision problems in software. Uh, that's sort of the power of using a processor to uh, build test instrumentation. Uh, so that was kind of neat there. Here's the, of course, instrumentation amplifier. Uh, here's the little socket for the uh, OLED display. Here's that little DC uh, to DC converter. So a uh, pretty straightforward topology. Uh, basically, you, you put here the voltage that's going into the circuit here. You have to break the circuit and uh, insert these two terminals here, of course, to measure the current. And then uh, off it goes as sort of a self-contained uh, measurement uh, instrument.
Let's talk about resolution. Uh, this meter's uh, main purpose is to measure uh, very low wattage uh, devices, uh, but measure the energy with uh, the highest resolution possible. Uh, I started out with an Arduino because, quite frankly, I have one on my bench. Um, and I had to set the sample time. The faster the sample time, the even better the resolution. Uh, the Arduino, of course, uh, isn't a super beefy processor, so um, I set integration time of uh, 100 milliseconds, and I'll show some interesting um, work there about how you get interrupts and how you measure things like that to see if you set a, a realistic time. Uh, but anyways, that's one millisecond is the uh, time between samples, and essentially that's integration. Then uh, you measure the voltage. The resolution there is approximately 5 volts of about 1024, because the 10-bit ADD converter, about 5 millivolts there. The current, uh, I set it to be a uh, 1 amp, since I've got a, a 5 watt and below meter. Uh, 1 divided by 1024, of course, gives you this uh, value of uh, 977 microamps. Uh, voltage times current times time uh, gives you the resolution, which is about half a microjoule, uh, which is just excellent. Um, it's sort of where I needed to be. Let's uh, take a look at the practical um, sampling of time and uh, looking how that's done inside the Arduino. So let's talk about the uh, how do you measure something in a periodic basis. The uh, key, of course, is to uh, measure something on a very uh, regular basis, then integrate. Uh, and of course, the best thing to do that is to write an interrupt service routine for the actual measurements. And what you're looking at here is just the little code fragment uh, which shows the uh, measurements that are made. You basically sample the voltage, sample the current, uh, multiply them together. Then, of course, you have to store that result uh, as a joule. And uh, then a post-processing you can do further out in the main loop. And uh, of course the question is how fast can you run it? And uh, you can see at the very start of the ISR I put a, a bit of code in which uh, toggles one of the I.O. pins on the Arduino. And then when it exits it uh, sets it back to a, a low value. And the reason I do that of course is to get some sense of how much time is being sent in the ISR. Uh, if you spend all your time in the ISR of course the, uh, the eventually it will freeze up. Uh, you can see that I've chosen such that uh, about one quarter of the time it's in the ISR and about three quarters of the time it's actually doing things like uh, updating the display. Um, and that's a pretty comfortable one. I could probably even push it actually. I could probably uh, sample even faster here um, and give less time to the main loop program. And uh, you can see that that uh, is a real easy way of determining whether or not you have uh, enough uh, time left in your processor. Uh, in terms of code profiling, this can be a very powerful technique. So as a functional circuit, it actually worked out well, and it actually allowed me to evaluate two different design approaches for something I was designing. And I could uh, select the approach which uh, consumed the uh, smallest number of joules over the run. Um, if I was to keep on continuing to the circuit, there's a couple of enhancements I would definitely uh, want to investigate. As I mentioned, if you reverse the current leads, you drive a negative voltage out of the instrumentation amplifier, and that's not so good for an Arduino. It doesn't accept negative voltages. That would uh, be something worthy of a bit of attention. Uh, the other one's a little more subtle uh, because of noise and uh, jittering around the zero mark. Uh, you basically want to filter that out. Uh, and also you potentially would like to move the reference point up a few millivolts uh, away from the zero volt ground floor. Uh, so you could have both positive and negative events uh, to help out uh, averaging correctly. But uh, I, surprisingly, just as a proof of concept uh, with such a, a straightforward application, it definitely helped me out. So if you ever need to measure really precise amounts of energy consumed by an electronic circuit, uh, certainly an interesting way of going about it.